Welcome to Lake Cascade here, mid-May. Beautiful blue skies. The wind though is absolutely atrocious. Water temp is 56 degrees this morning. Last night it was about 60. I'm in the north end right now. And this is how I normally fish in the spring. We've done a few, a few videos like this before, but uh, since we started the Lake Cascade fishing group, uh, there's a lot more people that have joined and, and this question always comes up like, how do I catch perch on Cascade this time of year? So. This short video, unfortunately, we couldn't travel a whole lot of the lake because it is, it's so rough. Uh, this morning they are calling for four miles, mile per hour winds out of the west. And so I planned to fish the other side and I slept in my truck, woke up to my truck shaking, which is not a great sign. Came over here on the east side. And what I always do, almost always this time of year, is I'll troll first, I'll troll wraps first until the weeds get too obnoxious and this is the wrap i always start with almost always this one another perch color and then we have a crayfish color this is the sr5 size this is a perch colored rapala and that is the correct way to say it rapala <clears throat> i know a lot of guys zero pala but in the words of the people that own rapala they say it's actually rapala but as long as you buy it we don't really care how you say it so we troll first and in the depth I'm trolling is five to nine feet of water. Earlier in the day, right away in the morning, pretty shallow, five, six feet of water. A little bit later, unless, uh, unless you get some good chop and cloud cover, they'll move out a little bit deeper. Once we find active fish, we can keep trolling and you keep picking up fish. But if you have a day like today where it's really windy and just kind of sucks to control the boat, especially if you're by yourself, then I'll switch over to something like this. This here is just a little floating jig, floating jig head, and a really dried up piece of worm. Underneath these weeds, you can use any weight set setup you want. This is what I had on here, a couple split shot. Uh, sometimes simple is better, guys. There's a lot of worm rigs out there that you could use, but once I got on the school today, it was nonstop action. I was anchored right on top of them for about an hour. It was all I could do to just keep keep catching them. So, fill the basket full, as many as we can eat. We give a bunch away, and then just went around trolling for some other fish. I tried to get out to show a few different other spots in the lake uh, where you can catch them, but it's just it's just so rough today that it's really. I mean, my truck is the only uh, boat trailer in the whole parking lot of one of the most. Uh, used boat accesses on, on the lake. So that should tell you something right away in the morning. Amazing. So here's my thought here. This hopefully will help you out. We'll show you the video, but early morning, usually in the evening, up shallow, they're going to be up feeding like crazy. Midday, unless you have good chop and some cloud cover, they're going to move out a little bit and it might be harder to find. So maybe try to target those time frames right away in the morning, in the evening. Last night I went out. It was slow right away. Ended up catching a handful of perch, uh, trout, and a pike minnow right in that last hour of before the sun kind of dips over the mountains there. So, okay, so that's how we did it. I don't think I told you how fast I was trolling. About 1.8 miles per hour seemed to be kind of like my prime. That's that's kind of what I shoot for is 1.8. Um, you can kind of just mess around with that and see how it affects the fish. Anything else? Oh, make sure your net is like buried in the front of the boat, covered with a bunch of stuff. That's usually a good way to catch some fish, some big ones too. That's what I do. Well, let's just get right to it. Here we are, Lake Cascade. Hope you guys enjoy a short little video of a bunch of perch on a pretty windy day. Take care. All right, made it to the west side. I'm gonna set you guys up so you can enjoy the sunrise. I like the boat ready. Definitely less windy here, which is to be expected. Beautiful. That part is beautiful. Well, how was it? It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Here's what you have for food. Got a banana, some dry roasted peanuts, 
fig bars. Shout out to the Midwest, a bubbler. And when it's gone, we're done. It's always important to make sure your net is furthest away from you in the boat. Usually put some stuff in it. Okay. Um, guys, I would say that is inhaled. That is unbelievable. I, uh, it's been a long time since I've had a, a perch inhale Parappa like this. I mean, that is a good sign. There's our fish. Let's get that bump board. Okay. First mess out of the way. Get back up over this spot. Go through there again. Thought I was bumping bottom, but it was fish. We get some more on the bottom there, guys. There you go. Same spot. Same spot, same result. Like I said, this was way smaller, and I probably snagged it on the belly. Well, when they come in sideways like that, they sure feel a lot bigger. How did that thing eat that rapala, huh? They all seem to be just off that shallow, shallow stuff. <clears throat> Usually when it is windy like this, you'll get them shallow all day. That's what I want, but I barely started reeling, and that's thought maybe had a weed at first. Okay, the fish are right off, right off that break in seven and a half feet of water. There, one. maybe a little bigger. I mean, more he's hooked sideways again. better okay I think we found a spot we might want to anchor I've gone maybe 80 yards from the boat ramp which is good on a windy day like today we'll go back through one more time mark them and then anchor there's another one but he was out in that Deeper stuff though. There we go. They're just in here. I think they're just in here all over. And if it stays somewhat overcast and windy, which it's supposed to, I think we'll catch these all day. And these aren't the big ones, but these are great eating size perch. Guys, I'm just trying to get adjusted here and I got another fish. Oh, 
was a lot of work trolling around. I threw out an anchor just to catch my breath, even though it's just non-stop perch action. Let's see if I can be on top of them here for a second. I got a, I got a felt floater on that I had for catching walleyes the other day. And on this, on this exact setup, I caught a 25 inch walleye back in Minnesota. So, they're related. So, we'll see. Oh, I already got a fish on. I already got a fish. I guess that works. Maybe today is one of those days where everything's gonna work. Little Phelps floater. Actually, I don't even know if it's a Phelps. It's a floating jig. I mean, it's so instant. That's a bigger fish. That's a bigger one. That's probably a net job there. hungry right there I mean it's instant 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 you guys keeping track I should have netted that one. That's by 14, so. It's like a brief, like, break in the gale force winds. I mean, it still looks really windy out there. Something took my worm, guys. I went. I caught like 20 fish on one worm, three on the next, and that one there was a hit and run. A little jerk. It's a beautiful time of year, you know, like you see all the ducks paired up, beautiful drakes, still snow in the mountains. Today it feels like duck hunting, cold. Yesterday I was out in a t-shirt and shorts. I went out um, at a spot that is normally pretty good and I caught a few, nothing huge. And I had another spot in mind this morning, but the wind was beating into that shore. I can't imagine how rough it would be fishing over there today. So I came to the west side of the lake. It hopes to get out of the wind a little bit. And we did. What is this thing? Oyster. I cannot even see. This just tells you how hungry they are. Just devouring everything in their path. Anyways, came over here to get out of the wind a little bit. And I made it to the first bay and started catching fish trolling, which is always a good way to find active fish. Trolling around with some wraps. And active fish we have found. Trolling the hard part is it's so windy. It's just not as enjoyable to be moving around with the, in the boat. But that's what it is. It doesn't do me good to complain. Usually I would not fish this spot. Usually it's a lot of smaller fish, but they're here today. I'll be gone tomorrow. 
as it warms up, this 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 bay, this area of the lake is gonna be, it's shallower, so it warms up quicker. And so they won't be in shallow like this for long. When you move further south, you get some deeper, bigger water. And I feel like you can fish shallow longer into the year here in Cascade, so. Should I set it? Okay. That's not, that's not basket material. It's this bad and I'm basically on the shore on the west side so imagine how bad it would be if we get out a little bit well that school kind of moved on so we're gonna troll around till we find some more I'm assuming they're close I don't know that they would have gone all deeper the water temperature actually cooled off the water temperature has actually cooled off since we first got here it's at 54.5 degrees Fahrenheit for those keeping score at home. There. Hammered it. Man, that feels like a nice fish. But let's be honest, when you're trolling and something hits it, it always feels nice. This this just feels this feels different. Oh yeah. It's a very nice perch. Fourteener right there. Very great, very nice fish. I mean, not again, not a huge fish for Cascade, but 14 as an average is uh, bigger than most places you'll ever fish. Okay, SR5, it's a perch color. There's a few different perch options. Six pound mono. If you go more than six pound, your rapala is not gonna dive to the depth you want it to. You go less than six, you really risk the chance of breaking off on a bigger on a bigger trout or smallmouth or something like that. I haven't experimented much with braid. I know a lot of guys love braid, but just telling you what works for me. So we troll around with that. Now if I go back through here and we hit another fish, I'm marking fish all over in the bottom. So we could just anchor again here but let's troll around for a bit i forgot to show you how far to cast back out next time next time i cast i'm going about 1.8 is kind of the i don't know you can mess around with that number but the wind just died down hallelujah and we we're in five to nine feet of water basically you start feeling the hit bottom. And you feel that rapple and move like this. If you hit weeds, it'll stop vibrating. And that's when you have to bring things in and check it out. Cast back like that. Let a few pulls out. I do pull on my wrap like this. Just adjust a few things and see if that triggers a bite. Doesn't feel very big. I mean, if we were hungry and not catching fish, 
I mean, I felt him hit, hit it. He didn't seem very big. And I was correct. He may have noticed throughout this video that I have all the plastic on my on my Helix 7 still. And uh, now it's time to take it off. I just want to make sure it worked. Sometimes if, uh, you know, I'll keep tags on clothing for a while, you never know. I know some of you OCD people notice that. Done.